Welcome to the ADB Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. G'day, mate. How are you? Good. Well, today we're going to be talking about shrinkage. No, we're not. Yes, <laughs> we're we are. Be, we're going to be talking about cold therapy, not something that I typically get excited about. No, cold therapy is one of those things where you jump into like an ice bath and there's all different versions of that. Yep. And it's something it's that- a Wim Hof Made famous. Exactly. We're going to talk yep. about him today. We're going to talk he, about he's, Wim Hof. He, he's got a website all about this and he teaches it around the world and all this sort of stuff. And it was great because he's even got a link on his webpage where you click on it, it shows you the science of it. Yeah, nice. And it's got some papers. I've got some more modern stuff than that, but it's still in the same vein as, as what he's talking about. And we are going to be talking about shrinkage today. Well, okay. Yeah. Do you want to start with the shrinkage part? No, not particularly. Oh, no, but, it's not that sort of shrinkage. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. well okay. Well, probably is, if actually. we want to segue into it. Yeah. Um, so let's... Let's start with the gold standard. Gold what standard. Most people, when you talk cryogenic, when you talk cold therapy, yep. I reckon they'd be thinking one of three things. Yep. Ice bath, yep. which is very extreme. Yep. I think most people would probably do cold showers, but depending where you live. In Queensland, during summer, if you have a cold shower, it's lukewarm. Yeah, it's about twenty five degrees. Because yeah. I do. Yeah. I mean, and, and don't, don't, don't. You know, I'm no hero. It's thirty degrees in the morning, and after I go to the gym or something, come back out of a cold shower. I'm not being a hero. No. It's just uh, the, You're the just water's. Doing it. Yeah. Well, the worst thing that you can do in Queensland is actually have a hot, warm shower during summer. You get out, you you dry yourself with the towel, and yeah. it is in a humidity. You feel as wet when you put your clothes on. Everything's sticking to your eyes. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty gross. It's, it's, so, yeah, that's not it. No. Steve, break down. And plunge pool is the yes. other one, right? Which is starting to become more popular where you've got these hot and cold pools that people jump between. Yeah. Um, all right. Talk, talk to me about all right, the most what is the gold standard? The, the most extreme cold I found in all these, these studies, <laughs> you're going to love this, was done on an animal study on rats because they, 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 they plunged them in the cold pool for an hour. Okay. I don't know how they didn't die. Now, what they did was this. They, they tested this, this study. And what they were trying to look out for was they, they gave these rats – Tumors, okay, that grow. I know, not not the funnest thing. And what they did was they tried different therapies. So the four groups, <coughs> those poor rats, were given lung cancer, which is a terminal cancer. Well, they give them a pack of smokes a day. Yeah, you know, that's a, yeah, that's exactly right. And so what they did was they, they either treated them with surgery, yeah, um, or heat therapy, yeah, or cryotherapy, like like cold immersion therapy. And guess which one was the most effective? Cold therapy. Cold therapy. Yeah, and Why? when I say the most of it, I'm going to show you and we'll put this up on the screen. <laughs> Have a look at the graph of the size of the tumours compared to the resection. Wow. Yeah. Now, if, if it, it's, it's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? Like, oh, you haven't got glass. I forgot about that. No, I can kind of, <laughs> I can kind of make it out. Oh, dear. It just takes me a bit longer. Wow. And, and if you turn that, so we'll put this up on. If yeah. you guys are following, and if on, you YouTube. turn that over, you see a graph there. If you can see, I can read the graph out for you. Yeah, but that, that's the survival time of the rats. Now you see the control group; they got lung cancer and pretty much quickly died. Yep. If they're in cryotherapy, they lived a lot longer. Yeah, they most sure of them did. lived, you know, right up until the end of the trial. Yeah, right. Now, isn't that incredible? Yeah, it is. And what they found was that that you, when you're under cryotherapy, you secrete this potent anti-tumor chemical that shrinks tumors. So I mean. You and I hate cold, cold therapy, but what if you got lung cancer? Now, it's a rat study, but wouldn't you at least try it? Bloody oath. Cryotherapy is not, uh, you know, it doesn't have so, like... So what are you secreting? Yeah. What is it? They, they didn't name that. The, the, they only named the, the chemical as like a H number thing. It's called um, yeah. what is this? HSP-70 HSP is what you release. And because it's newly discovered chemical. Wow. You know, yeah, so that, that's what they named it, and it shrunk the tumours, as you so can see. So therefore... Yeah. Can we look at population studies and see that people live in extreme cold environments, have less cancers? Yeah, that, that, there's no evidence. They've probably that, got less skin cancer. Yeah, yeah, they have less skin cancer, but they have less vitamin D, which is uh, low vitamin ah. D. But, but also, of course, if you live in, say, Siberia, you're not going to have many polyphenols because you're not going to have many abundant plants. There's gotcha. lots of other factors. Sure. But, but this is cold therapy. This is going in a pool for an hour. Um, and the, the tumours shrunk dramatically. Wow. And the, the rats live longer. Over what period of time? Um, the longest period of time for this study. I'll, I'll, so I'll, how long did they go into the cold water for? Oh, they went in for an hour. Yeah. I know that. That's a long time. Now, how, yeah. Now, now, as you can see by the, the survival rates, the, the study <coughs> went on for a number of months, and I've just got to remember the exact amount because it's in here. Because, yeah, here we go. Oh, uh, yeah, well, 400 days. You know, or up, up to 300 days, there was still more than half the 
lung cancer rats were still alive. Wow. Now, compare it to the control group, after 60 days, all the rats were dead. So with these rats, um, they looked at total survival. And the control group were just given lung cancer after 60 days, they were all dead. That makes sense. But if they were given the lung cancer and then they were measured after 300 days, over half of them were still alive. Wow. With the cryotherapy. With the cryotherapy. Wow. If you dunked them in ice for an hour. Now, it's pretty extreme in in my opinion, but if you're dying of lung cancer, uh, this is a rat trial, by the way, so we're not going to, you know, we haven't found the cure to cancer, but... There is other evidence showing that it does boost the immune system. Now, remember, you, there won't be many human trials in this because giving humans lung cancer is not might pass to ethics. But rats, they love it. So, well, Steve, why do people do cold therapy? What What is the main benefits that people are hoping to get from yeah. it? There's 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 two main therapies. It's pain and recovery. Yep. And immune system boosting. What about growth hormone what about testosterone what about other hormone what about yep. so did you say inflammation as well inflammation too? absolutely show okay what has been proven that we know that is beneficial and how long do people need to put themselves into cold therapy sure ha- ha- for duration per yep. session and yep. how many times per week sure well it's funny because I, I spent the day with grant yesterday and he does cryotherapy yes i know he does and wants to buy grant is a, a salesman here i was on the road with him and we were yep. talking about and i was saying i'm doing cryotherapy they, oh wow you know what i mean well he's always got an excuse to his girlfriend then doesn't he <laughs> yes i've okay. just come out of the plunge pool uh, 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 <laughs> okay so so Cryotherapy is very, very different depending on, on who, you, who you ask and what the studies are. Yeah. This cryotherapy study was cooling with 15, uh, 15 degrees Celsius. So it was just chilling the body. It wasn't an ice bath. Mm. And, and if, if you did that, sat in a cold, I'll say a very cold room, you know, like 30, 15 degrees, not super cold. But no. probably somewhere out in the factory today, it would be 15 degrees. Seriously, sometimes I come in and the air condition's broken and Tony and Elsa's room, it's like... 30 degrees in my room, it feels like it's probably about 15 degrees. 15 degrees. Well, you could be doing some benefit. If yeah. you've just been to the gym and you, you administered that within three to six hours, you had significantly less um, damage, structural change in your tissues if you exercised. Right. So but it, there's good, you know, breakdown, which is obviously the breakdown of micro yep, the muscle. Yep. But is, is, are you talking about the, the, the additional negative effects from, from yeah, training. Yeah, because you still get breakdown when you exercise and when you stop exercising, the breakdown has stopped. Yeah. So then, then you've, you've got, got the recovery phase. Recovery phase. Right? phase. This but, helps you recover faster. Right. So why? By, by helping remove inflammation? Yes, it removes how inflammation. It, and how does it remove inflammation? Sure. Too? There was a paper on how they removed inflammation. And what it does is it, it, it actually improves the innate and adaptive immune response. So, so when you've got like lots of damage, tissue damage, your immune system rushes there to make sure the damage, like, well, if you cut yourself, you want your immune system there to stop you. But if you damage yourself, you want the immune system there to make sure nothing goes wrong and you don't get an infection, all this sort of stuff. So the adaptive and immune response go there and cause inflammation. Right. So you get massive the inflammation and swelling of tissue. Now, we know that uh, putting ice on it reduces the swelling and inflammation. Of course. Yeah. If you imagine that, if you've, and they just tested in this case cyclists and runners, which is almost the whole body damage, they gave them cryotherapy and they had a much better tissue repair response when they were un- under cryotherapy. Now, this was um, three once a day sessions of cryotherapy in this particular study. Mm. And you're going to love this. It improved almost every aspect of the immune system and their sex hormones, including follicle stimulating hormone. Wow. Yeah. It increased HDL um, and insulin-like growth so factor. Good good cholesterol. Good cholesterol, <clears throat> yeah. It increased insulin-like growth factor one. Yes. I knew that it, it had an effect on growth hormone. Yeah. And, and IGF-1 is more potent than growth hormone because that's the active form yeah, of right. growth hormone. Of course. So, so I mean- huh. I mean, you know, people go to the gym and they smash it out, which is great, and, you know, that's what you're supposed to do, and they take great supplements, but why aren't they considering this? It works. Well, this is what Grant's obviously tapped into. He's on to That's a 2020 study, and it's, it's, it's titled, just for those who are following along at home, Effects of Whole Body Cryotherapy on the Innate and Adaptive Immune Response in Cyclists and Runners. So it's a pretty good study, and it goes through all the immune so, system. So, again, Steve, just yeah. break it down. So yep. in, in, reduction in inflammation. Yes, uh, in, increase in um, in good cholesterol. Good cholesterol, yep. Increase in 
uh, luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone. Oh, fo- follicle which is stimulating one of the hormones, hormones that drives your sex hormones. Yep. So and and, and uh, increase in IGF one, the yes. more active part of growth hormone. Exactly. How significant uh, increase was it? Oh, for for which which of those? They were they were, they were well, all they were all clinically significant. Okay. So depending on which one you want to pick up on there, I've got the table <coughs> right here. Tell me all of them. All right. Well, IGF one. For cyclists, yeah. it was 194, and it went to 221. Okay? okay? So that's pretty good. Yeah. So that's over tw- – oh, it's about a 10% increase in IGF-1, just over 10% increase in IGF-1. Yeah. Which is huge. I mean, imagine getting that that form of growth hormone. And here's the kicker. Normally growth – normally insulin-like growth factor, you get it rises in insulin as well. Yeah. But it reduced insulin secretion. Yeah. So you get that growth without the insulin spike because if you inject yourself with insulin, you will get more IGF-1 because insulin makes up IGF-1. But in this case, you got the good without the bad because you don't want too much insulin floating around your body. Um, Follicle-stimulating hormone went up by, well, it was significant, 4.6 to 5.2. So, And what is FSH good for, Steve? It's good for two things. In men, it drives testosterone production. And in women, it follicle-stimulating hormone, where the name came from, it stimulates follicle release. So it's good for fertility in women. Excellent. So, I mean, how good is that? That is good. I mean, also, the cytokines, the anti-inflammatory cytokine interleukin-8, which is which is anti-inflammatory, so it's one of the ones that dampen it down, went from 415 to 442. Is that, is that significant? Yeah. <coughs> that reached p-value of 0.014. Okay. Yeah. So quite significant. <coughs> so I'm only picking over the, the significant ones. It reduces blood sugar levels as well. Really? Now, I love that because it didn't. It reduced insulin and reduced blood, blood glucose levels. Wow. So the body's utilizing. I had no idea it's it had doing, that, that the, bo- the body's doing something. It's, it's metabolizing higher. Now, normally when you have a higher metabolism, that's from something you get higher urea in the, in the blood as well. And in this study, urea went up from 35 to 42. Wow. So something's going on in the body that's causing increased metabolism, increased growth release, increased fertility, reduced inflammation, and increasing your metabolism. Now, the cold, I understand, we're increasing the metabolism because the body's trying to fight the cold. And this is only 15 degrees. Yeah. And for how long? Well, no, this this was an ice bath. An ice yeah, bath. Three times a day. So they, they, they did an ice so bath. So what would be one. the temperature inside an ice bath? Uh, probably zero because ice melts at zero and yep. water freezes at zero. So yep. you've got a mixture of both. Yeah. It'd be very close to zero. Right. So uh, not the most pleasant of of situations. And how long were they in this ice bath? Uh, they were in there for three minutes. So it's too long. Yeah, it's too <laughs> long, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm kidding. And look, people that are athletes. I mean, you see this as well too. Yeah, you know the AFL. They're always sitting, standing there, with their arms folded like this, mm. talking. You know, you know all those. You know, and 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 that's awesome. You know, Australia's surrounded by sea, especially down south. It's bloody cold during yeah. winter for these footballers. So I don't know what the temperature would be. Probably somewhere around about you know ten degrees oh, in or the something. Water, yeah, 12. ten degrees. Yeah, they, they do that because they do a form of cryotherapy in Melbourne and and Queensland. Where on the Monday after the game on yeah, Sunday, yeah. they'll go to the beach. Yeah, or the pool, yeah. you know, and they'll do laps and, you know. Yeah, and in stuff. Melbourne, we used to see them down the, the beach and we thought, oh, they're crazy. But realistically, and this is the thing, Steve, I, if I was working with the Broncos yeah. um, or the Reds or yep. the All Blacks, yep. you can call if you want. Um, Damn, All Blacks. You, you'd, be, you'd be wanting to, to get the guys into these plunge pools. Um, Absolutely. Because they would. are, and I think uh, with those plunge pools, I think they're typically like pretty pretty damn close to zero, aren't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Almost. I mean, there's no ice in them, but they, they get them pretty damn cold. And, and you got to remember that, that in these studies, they, they go to the extreme to get a result. Yeah. So you're still going to get benefit even if you're you know, sitting in a cool room or something. But, but it, it's just this is the best way to do it. So if you can do it three times a day, because it's a trial. Three times. I mean, if you're a professional, I mean, yeah. I don't know about you, but I don't have access to a plunge pool three times no. a day. I don't have access to a bath with ice. And I mean, how much, where would you, you'd have to go get bags of ice from the survey. Yeah. And, and yeah. But let's say you're a professional bodybuilder. I am. Yeah, obviously. Um, but, but, but I, I would do this once a day. I mean, right. I would go to the gym, smash it, and get that because you recover quicker. Yep. You get more growth hormone release. Yep. Get rid of glucose. Yep. Your metabolism goes up. Yep. It's just going to be a win-win. All right, you might do it for five minutes in the ice bath. Sure. I mean, yes. I mean, okay. So if you were worked out and then you took, you know, um, so how much is a glucose intolerance test, Steve, to get the insulin spike? 75 grams? 
Yes, they drink 75 grams of yeah. glucose, yeah. So so th- you do that, creates insulin. Yep. You take your amino acids, your protein as well too. You, you scarf that down. Yep. Then you jump into an ice bath. Then. Yeah. That's exactly right. As soon as you can after you exercise. And, I mean, you'll get this growth hormone release. You, Maybe. The hormone levels will go up. Um, um, you, you, you see protein goes down, so that's inflammation. That's uh, yeah. like reactive, reactive protein. protein. Yeah. Yeah, so no, CRP that, that's, goes big, that's becoming a big problem, Steve. Oh, absolutely. It's a, it, it, chronic CRP increases um, heart disease. Yeah. Now, this okay. reduces it's it. It's pretty impressive. All right. HDL so goes up. That's at the extreme. That's yeah. an ice bath. That's an ice bath. All right. So then what right, else? I'll judge I'm going to go you a, a less extreme. Well, sort of we know version. Wim I mean, did you want to talk about Wim Hof? Because, I mean, he's swimming yeah. around in the Arctic, isn't he? He is. He's. I, I'd have to put in the, the thing of, of extreme. He's because, extreme. Yeah. But he's it's ex- always good to go to the extreme. Yeah, of course it is. And then we bring it, we walk it back, Steve, yep. for, for you know, someone who might like to have a, a glass of cold water. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like, you've got your Wim Hofs. Yep. You've got your, your people who are jumping into ice baths yep. a couple of times a week. I mean, as you're correctly saying, if you're a professional athlete, yeah, you're a bodybuilder, you're getting on stage, mm. you know, you, maybe you're older in your career, you want to improve – um, your immune system, yep. you, you want to uh, improve your, your hormone profiles. Yep. If, if I was a professional like Ronaldo yeah. or like some of these American baseballers. Ronaldo's now the highest played sports saw in the that. world. Saw that. What's he on? Uh, I think it was $190 million, I think, for the year. How's that all? It's not bad, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think he must be closing in on a billion dollars. I think last time I saw it, he was worth over half half a billion. He was like five hundred something, six hundred yeah. million dollars. I mean, anyway, that's four but, million a week. Yeah, okay, so he's pushing forty. Yeah, right. Um, Zlat, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, we're best mates. Zlatan and I. Zlat, yeah. uh, I love him. He's my absolute favourite footballer. Is he? Like, he's he's just brilliant. Oh, your oh, favourite footballer? Oh, he is brilliant. Yeah. He is brilliant. He, I mean, I you know him. he's brilliant. He's, is he that brilliant? He like, is that brilliant. Well, okay. He is that brilliant. And he's and he's also probably one of the funniest bastards you'll ever see in your life as well, too. Yeah. Right? Like, he is okay. he is the GOAT. He yeah. really is. Um, he's, he's now 41, 42. He's a bit older. This, if you can get an extra year yep. on your contract, yep. you know, what's that worth to you? 20, 30, 40 million dollars for exactly. these athletes? You would do it. Well, I absolutely like that English bowler, uh, Cook. Who's in his forties? I don't know how old he is, but he's in his. Is he 40s. a spin bowler? No, he's a pace bowler. No, he is. He's he's the opening bowler for England. Get out! And I don't know if his name's Cook, but but uh, anyway, he's in his forties, and one of the things he puts it down to his ice baths. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. He was in Australia. Well, for there the, you go. Yeah, I didn't know that. When when we smashed England for the Ashes about a year ago. Well, he can't ago. be that good then, can no, he? No, well, he's he's good for England. <laughs> You mean he's good Racist. for Australia yeah. while he's in the English can, squad? Can I pick on the English? I am from English descent, so um, I can pick on them because it's ashes. You know, it's a bit, but yeah, no. They, is, that, is that considered racism if he's white? Nobody cares. I don't know. Nobody cares even if he's. Don't, don't yeah. know. No. But he's old and he's, I mean, he's still, he's, you know, he's, he's 135. He's no, you know, tear away quick like he probably was. But, 135 but is, you know, not, probably not express. I mean, it's medium no. pace, right? So. No. I mean, he's our star, our, our fastest bowler is in the one forties. Yeah, um, mind maybe, you, do you remember a good old Jeff Thompson? Oh, what do you know was what? his speed? One sixty. One sixty. They actually reckon that he may have been faster. And it's wow. funny because I was listening to an interview with some of the batsmen in the time. Yeah, and they were saying that there that Jeff Thompson was faster than Malcolm Marshall and all these guys by some bet. They reckon that the speed that he bowled the ball was just lightning. He was. He was lightning. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Imagine facing him. 100 miles seven, an hour. Yeah, 100 miles an hour, 161 kilometres an hour. Imagine facing him and DK Lilly in their primes. Yeah. And would, they were. In the 75, they were both in their primes. Yeah. I mean, Lilly was a great bowler, fast at the time before he did his back injury. Fast, probably more, more accurate than yeah. Thompson, I think. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. sort of, you know, probably, yeah. Considered to be a probably overall maybe a more successful bowler. I think his stats prove that. Yeah, his stats were. It's funny, the best Australian bowler now is a spin bowler. Warn. Recently, yeah, Warnie. Oh, he was awesome. Well, yeah, he's I probably the best. He'd be up there. You, you consider him with, um, you know, the Michael Jordans, the yeah. Muhammad Ali's. I yeah. mean, realistically, he's a freak. The Don Bradmans. Yeah. You know, well, he's, he's a freak. He's, he's a double the freak. He's from um, Black Rock in, right near where I was born. Is that right? Yeah, in fact. You know, he he his his house is in Black Rock, yeah. in Melbourne. So, and he's there's the same so age sad man. that he's passed away. Actually. Yeah, he, he's passed away at fifty three. I was fifty three at the time too. So he he him and I are the same age. You know, same is that child right? too. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, 
And, and it's funny because in indoor cricket, I played. Le- I did leg spin bowling too. I, I used to do a bit of leggy. Yeah. I used to flip the leg, Steve. I was never. I was I used never to get the leg over. As they yeah, used to I say. did you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. no. I was in the Crescent Crew. In 1986, and we were an A-grade indoor cricket team. Yeah, I was A-grade. playing indoor cricket in 1986. Really? I was. Last I was year of high young. school. Oh, yeah. last year of high school. Yeah, 86 was last year of high school for yeah. me. Gosh. So I was old then. You are old, Steve. <laughs> old. Irrelevant, some might say. Oh, oh absolutely. No, nobody would say that. But Steve. isn't that funny? Like, like you know, like, like these. we're talking about these ageing athletes. This is a method to keep your career longer. 100%. And this is what I yeah. really love about yeah. science is is – Making people better for longer, a- improving their 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 function. I mean, take this with the, the really young athletes yep. as well too. They're going to get benefit as well too. But certainly for the older guys. Well, absolutely. All right, Steve. What yep. else you got for me? All right. So let's say you got a disease. Yep. Let's say you've got rheumatoid arthritis. Now, does everyone know what that is? It's yeah. usually in your hands, but it can happen out the joints, and it's an autoimmune disease. It happens more in women than men, um, and it's an it's an autoimmune disease. Bad arthritis, very common. Now, when you when you we, they did a study on these on these people um, with regards to uh, um, cold therapy, and they measured their bloods and all this sort of stuff, and um, they 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 divided these into two groups of twenty five, and they gave them cold therapy, which was ice immersion bathing. So. You know, we're back there. It was only for two minutes because uh, presumably these are slightly older individuals. Um, and what they found, the conclusion was, and we'll talk about the results, we report that regardless of the type of therapy, which with the cold therapy, comprehensive rehabilitation, um, uh, basically um, it improved the systemic reduction in systemic inflammatory marker, CRP, especially in the cold therapy group. So therapies worked because they all had their usual therapies, but cold therapy was the one that reduced the inflammation. Wow. So so that that's just in rheumatoid patients because they're very inflamed. Now, that's a, you, you, when we go through the rest of the studies here, it improved inflammation, you know, in our, in our athletes, but also in our disease groups. Mm-hmm. Now, inflammation is absolutely a, a chronic killer in our society. Mm-hmm. High inflammation, heart disease, cancers, everything. Inflammation is a massive killer. So could you get some benefit by just putting the head, let's say, if it's in your hands or your feet, mm. could you, or does it really need to be whole body immersion to get the whole, the whole thing? You can do any sort of cold therapy will help, and if you and you can you can you can actually if you've ever injured yourself and you put ice sure. on it, it feels better. Yeah. So that gives you that temporary benefit. But this this it won't reduce systemic inflammation. No, though. that's it. That's why they had to immerse them in the cold. Yeah, pool. yeah. So yeah. regardless of the therapy. Ice therapy on the hands didn't reduce systemic inflammation. So it did have a mild analgesic effect, but if you really want the therapy to reduce the inflammation in the body, unfortunately you need to immerse yourself in an ice bath for two minutes. No. But two minutes, I mean, can, can you, would you do it two minutes? Yeah, depending on what I was trying to achieve for sure. Yeah, if you had a severe rheumatoid arthritis, which was, you know, disabling, like this a lot of them is, then then this would be a possibility. I mean, why not? I mean... You know, you got to remember that the treatments for these guys are, are, are terrible, you know, systemic drugs, you know, um, meloxicams or um, any of these steroids they give them. It's absolutely incumbent on you to, to look at just dunking yourself in a cold ice bath. And you got to remember, you just fill your, 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 your bath up at home with cold water. Throw, throw, throw a bag of ice from the servo. $4 there. bag, yeah, from the servo. On the exactly. Survey, yeah. Not from the service. What's station. interesting, I guess, wherever we look in life, yeah. is that wherever people look for ease, yes, they get lost. Wherever people look to do things that are difficult without the pain, yep. there's no gain. Yep. It seems to be true again, right? I mean, again, you've got to put yourself into a position of discomfort yep. before you can expect to reap some benefit. Oh, I've, got, I've got to love this one. There's, 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 the, the, the interesting thing about this study is, okay, CRP went from, for those who are watching at home, went from 10.6, which is high, yeah. to 8.7. Wow. It should, if you want CRP to be healthy, it should be below one. Wow. But these are inflamed people. Wow, that's impressive. So I know a, a woman, I won't mention her name, but she's in a full drive club that I'm in, and she's got terrible rheumatoid arthritis. Like she's on cyclosporin and all these t- terrible immune suppressant drugs that, that knock out the immune system. This would this would be a time when, when you know, she hobbles around and she's only 40-something. Oh, so, yeah, it, this would be a, a great benefit for her. Yeah. But what I like about this is, is they tested them against the uh, control group um, and and the control group, actually, their inflammation because the control group is slightly lower actually went up slightly. So if you do nothing, 
your, your rheumatoid arthritis will get worse. Wow. But the cold therapy dropped it back down again. Jeez. And amazing. It is amazing. So talk to me about this Wim Hof character. Steve, oh, I where, love him. Why did he come to prominence and what's his, what's his deal? He's, 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 he's like, uh, his deal is suck it up, princess. Cold therapy is good for you. Mm-hmm. And you're t- on his website, it's you are tougher than you think. Wow. So I liked that. I went, oh, this is interesting. So, you know, I had a lot of research about his thing. And he runs classes. And he's actually got teachers around the world, one on the Gold Coast, who talks about cold therapy. Really? So, you know, she's a certified Wim Hof guy. But, but if you look at him on the website, he's probably about um, 60, 65. Yeah. And there's photos of him just in Speedos on... Uh, in, the, in the ice. On the ice. Yeah. Like sitting on ice. You know, he's, he's he the toughest it. of tough. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a photo of him, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Show, show me this Wim Hof. What? Yeah, 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 there yeah, he is. Yeah, here we go. All right, so pumps your body with vital oxygen. So this yes. is the first 30 to 60 seconds. This is what Wim, Wim Hof reckons it does. Yeah, it okay. wakes you up. Pump, pumps your body with vital oxygen. Yeah. One to three minutes, still breathe, still mind, in a piece. Okay, so yeah. he reckons it yeah. uh, Two to three minutes, energy rush. So your body signals... Um, you need oxygen, inhaling deeply makes fresh oxygen rush into your lungs, giving a sudden euphoric rush of vitality uh, vitality to every organ in your body, especially your brain. Controlled release of adrenal gives you a natural high. Three to 20 minutes. Yeah, now, now you're getting into tough man Feels territory. Feels good. Let's do it again. Okay, man, you're crazy. Yeah. Um, 20 to 25 minutes cold is your new warm friend. Um, 30 to 60 minutes, Viva Las Vegas, what's that say? Viva Las Vegas, Vegas nerve, it stimulates oh, the Vegas nerve. Ah, the Vegas nerve, yeah, we've yeah. spoken a little bit about that. Yeah. And, and what does the Vegas nerve do? With further practice, you can control your Vegas nerve and automatic nervous system, potentially a complementary... Uh, free of charge with absolutely no negative side effects. Oh, that's okay. Astonishing long-term benefits. Now, that's after an hour of being in an ice bath if you're not dead. Holy uh, cow. Uh, no, he, he's, he's done a lot of world records, by the way. He's done 26 of them. Wow. For, uh, for ice sitting exposure in ice and baths right. and all that sort of stuff. Okay. So this guy, you got to remember, is, is the top of the food chain when it comes to cold therapy. And, you know, I mean, I, mean, I don't know how you can go in the bath for 60 minutes. Well, it's funny, like you go out for a swim and all of a sudden, you know, you start warming up again and then you stand up and then the water, the, the, the breeze hits you and you put your shoulders back under the, the thing again, right? So I've obviously got, the body must get a tolerance. I know. I've got a confession to make. This is how bad I am. Um, where I live, there's an outdoor heater pool. It's 27 degrees and it's in the sun. Yep. Now, if I swim there in the middle of the day and I get out of the pool, I'm cold for most of the afternoon. Really? It's weird. I swim for 30 minutes and, and my core temperature drops down. So for me, that would be a cryotherapy. And it is. If I go for a long run in the morning, I'll try and swim in the afternoon. And that's the thing that makes me feel better, actually doing swimming. I remember when I did the marathon, I went home and well, I passed out in the bed for an hour and ate a lot of food and all this sort of stuff. Got up, went to the pools for about 20 minutes, just swam laps very slowly. And then I was ready to I could probably run again. Wow. It was the weirdest thing. And that was out in, and it was in winter uh. in the pool. Uh, and, and it was a heated pool, but still 27 degrees. I'm 37. It's 27. So heat's getting sucked out of my body. Gotcha. So it's still cold therapy, well, gotcha. if that makes sense. It does. But also the compression too. You move the lymph, lymph get rid of all the, 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 the acids and build up. Okay. And, and I, my feet significantly felt a hell of a lot better. Well, Wim Hof is an extreme. Mm. Now, we understand the benefits of plunge pools and ice baths and all yep. the rest of it. What about cold showers, Steve? I mean, I think you mentioned just before. So yep. typically, depending on the temperature of your, your cold water, in Christchurch in New Zealand, where my dad used to have finish oh, off with, yeah. he used to finish off with around about 30 seconds to a minute cold yeah, shower, right? I know. And I'm just like, Dad, you're nuts. Um, anyway, know. so he used to like it. And, he, and he'd get this thing and he'd go, Jeff, it opens up the airways. And like, he probably didn't understand all the stuff about increasing IGF and all the rest of it. But- that can be of, of obviously some benefit. Uh, there is one study on cryotherapy in, in older men, yeah. increasing the activity of what they call nitric o- oxide synthase. And the, the paper's titled, The Whole Body Cryotherapy Increased the Activity of Nitric Oxide Synthase in Older Men. There you go. Wow. So that's the name of the title. Which we know nitric oxide, great for oxygenation yep. in the blood, yep. uh, good for night activities. For night activities, absolutely. Not not right after the cryotherapy, though. That would be a bit No. Awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but you're gonna. The reason why I pulled this study was very interesting. Do, do you know what temperature they 
expose them for three minutes at? No, what? You're not going to believe this. What? Negative 130 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't even know Who? how they achieve that. Who? Peace Who's people. exposed? People. Peace people. Yeah. How do you... How, how, how is that possible? I do not know. It, it, it said, and you can read this here, three minutes at negative 130. Let me put my oh, sunglasses yeah, yeah. on. That, that's the paper, the methodology. Show me. There you go. I, I, I didn't believe it myself. Three minutes at 100 and... On well, negative 130. What? Because that, that's obviously one of those Arctic blasty, you know, that, that's like South Pole shit. Three minutes at 100. Surely that's not possible. I don't know either. Okay. I mean, I can't believe that. I'm going to okay. look at the methodology of this because that right. sounds dodgy to me. But that's what, unless dodgy. it's a big typo. Yeah, maybe it is a big be, typo. Um, maybe it was the negative said. 13 degrees. Yeah. See if it's well, repeated. No, 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 no. Negative 130. During, during WBC, well, the procedure consisting of short term offered repeat exposure to cryotherapic temperatures ranging from negative 100 to negative 160 degrees. I what? know. What? So what can the body stand? I mean, if, if that's what they're doing for 59-year-olds. Man, it gets down to know. 23 degrees. I'm like, where's my jumper? Yeah. Get my UGG boots on. I want my jumper in the car coming into work with the heater on on a sunny day. It's going to be 25 today. It's actually a Cardi, Steve. That's it's what you're Yeah. Yeah. If my jumper's sitting over there. It's yeah. just still slightly warmer in here, so I thought, oh, I'll take it off. I'm, I don't know how I'd cope with this, but, I mean, I – Oh, one to three minutes, five to 30 treatments, temperature room from negative 100 to um, negative 160, and that's not a typo. Well, I don't know how that happens, but that boosts your circulation. Just think of the shrinkage. Anyway, Steve. I, <laughs> I don't want to think be, about that. Be literally peanuts. But, yeah. um, Steve, let's let's then look at some other methodology for yep. maybe those people that are less extreme. Love me. Building themselves into it. So talk to me about some of the other things. If people don't want to submerge yep. themselves into sure. an ice bath, a plunge pool, yep. you know, I think probably a cold shower, even yep. just building it up for 30 seconds yep. and then see how you go. Um, 30 was, seconds is a hell of a long time when you're standing under the cold tap, by the way. There was absolutely. Now, now the problem with studying cryotherapy <coughs> is there's so many, like, it goes from the super duper extreme, like Wim Hof, sure. and, and, and then there's some that, that's like just dropping it at 15 degrees. I found a meta-analysis where they looked at all sorts of cold therapies and it went from the super extreme to just having now a cold we're talking shower. this yeah. is what i want to see because yep. steve like anything there's yep. the apex curve yep yes at the very top of the mountain there's <clears throat> one yep. hour yet you know into water that's freezing well according this, to this, this I, I'm, I'm going to dis- discard that negative 130 degrees well, i just don't believe it yeah but, i know it's, but anyway it's I, I'm, I'm i've been wrong before there, there is another study here where they went to negative 120 degrees no, just, i know it's just no, like no, i don't no, know come, how on, they... come on the amount of our listeners that would probably no. consider that would be maybe like 0.1 of one percent i know I know, but, but what they did in this this study was they looked at all sorts of cold therapies where you just was had a cold shower. Sure. Had a cold so it might compress, be 15 degrees. That's 15 sort of thing. degrees, yep. all that sort of stuff. They looked at – so this is a meta-analysis. That's okay. 25 different studies. Okay. So they're all different So, so you said cold compress, so that's around yep. the neck, or um, what about um, – I mean, are there things you, where you put it under your arm where you get your yep. limps? I mean, there's, like, what is that? There's, there's an ice pack for okay. 20 minutes. Where? Four where, times where, a day. Where do they put and it? And that was on the um, foot – in this case, because these people had painful gouty arthritis. Oh, okay, yeah. So it went like that, and then it, then it had um, negative uh, 20 and negative 30 degrees Celsius. So there's all these sorts of cold therapy. So across the board, and what they found through every single one of these studies is a reduced pain. Wow. Because the pain was the only outcome. Right. Now, the diseases, I, I mentioned ankylosing spondylitis. Here. Wow. So even if you've got a painful condition like AS, like mine, um, yeah, absolutely. Like you used to have. I used to have. I don't have pain from that anymore. Can't, can't really, you know. Have you still got your little disabled stick? At, no. Stick? Good that, on you, that mate. Would be, that Can would you be, imagine how much of an asshole oh, you'd be if you were doing that? I, I'd get out and run to the I'd shop. I'd punch you straight in the peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but they, they, these are the sort of um, painful injuries they had. Now, they're all musculoskeletal, but rheumatoid arthritis, gouty arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, um, osteoarthritis, chronic low back pain, um, capsulitis, uh, musculoskeletal disorders, myofascial pain, blah, blah. So, so these, these are the things. So even cold compresses, okay, four times a day, improve the pain outcomes. Right. Um, so, but, but we don't know if it had any impact on any of the other systemic, you know, hormone, okay, growth let, hormone, IGF-1. Yeah, let's have a look. Um, no, it was just just pain. They just only pain. measured pain, and it went from. Uh, Is that just from removing inflammation? Yeah, yeah. 
and and just probably shrinking the blood vessels in the area. Um, so so yeah, absolutely, it reduced the pain score from seven point seven five to four point four two. So one of the things I'm interested in, and yeah. and um, <clears throat> you mentioned it may be off off because we've sort of chopped this a little bit, but Steve, yeah, I'm interested in. And I believe it was Tim Ferriss mentioned about for for for, for us oh, mere Tim mortals, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Drinking half a litre of yep. ice cold water yep. first thing in the morning. Now yep. we spoke about the sea. You're drinking stuff that's near zero, right? Yep. We're thirty seven, seven degrees. About right. That. Yeah. So therefore when we drink it, we have to heat it up. Now people go I remember there used to be this thing back in the eighties: never drink cold water yeah. because it's it's not good for your body. Well, it's like actually, if your body's having to warm that water up and yeah. it's taking calories to do it, well, you're actually burning more calories. Is there any other benefits? And the other thing I wanted to yeah. ask is, you said before Terry Alderman out yeah. there, you know, getting a thirty-seven degrees. All of a sudden, you put some ice compress around your neck. Yeah. And it drops your blood temperature, you know, it drops your body temperature by a degree, half a degree, yeah. two degree. I don't know what's yeah, possible. That, that's absolutely fine. All right. So talk to me first about the water. Is it okay. fact or myth? Because, I, I mean, one, we sort of tease the people with this at the beginning. Yeah, I only found one study where they drank half a litre twice a day of, of refrigerated water, four degrees. Okay. And it imp- re- reduced CRP. That's the only thing they measured. Re- well, so that's it reduced good. inflammation. Okay, by well, about fifteen percent. Yeah. So don't go. Woo, it's not like jumping in an ice bath. Sure. But if you're going to do it, you know half. Well, a remove, is- and look, CRP is a big one. You know, see reactive protein. Yes. Highly inflammatory. Very inflammatory. Um, we know the benefits then of obviously as the body works to heat up the water. Now I like yeah. half a liter of water, even more if you can. But yeah. mind you, that's pretty damn hard. Mm. First thing in the morning, yeah. go for a walk. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's exactly what I do, except I. Put some powder in there with it. Yes, I know can you we, do. Can we mention the powder? No, we can't. No, okay. yes, you can. Because we're can. not talking about what the powder does. Oh, okay, yeah. I put in a powder called UPKA. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I do with that. Yeah. Don't meant to mention what it does or anything. Sure. But, no, I'm I'm actually going to be doing some deep dives into some food therapy, timing of food, exercise, yep. Steve, because there's a lot of stuff that's starting to come to the fore now, and I'm going. You know what? Yeah. Timing. You know, again, I'm a huge fan of, of utilizing fats, mm-hmm. and I think we underutilize fats and we avoid them too much, but utilizing fats first thing in the morning, which brings me to something else that yeah. I spoke to you about. Now, I don't yes. know if there's any, I don't think there would be any information. This on is this. one of the mystery ones. So, what I said to Steve was when we were sort of discussing the podcast, mm. I take a peppermint oil inside a product um, called Amperage that we make. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to talk about any of the nope, the, nope, the, the benefits per se, but when I take that, I, I have a belief that taking fats first thing in the morning, the oral cavity, and this is again thanks to Strength Sensei um, Poliquin yeah. who mentioned this, that he believed that taking whatever you consume, whatever you put in your mouth will help to upregulate the body utilizing that for fuel. Now, if you're in a fast state as well too, the ability to tap into to body fat, is, yeah. is, and it's almost like a primer, right? Yeah. <clears throat> now, I said to the guys, I, I read a book by Tim Ferriss called The 4-Hour Body, where he was recommending, if I remember correctly, and please, yeah. Tim, if you're listening to this, and I know you do, um, that uh, – Drinking the cold water was a good thing to do first thing in the morning and maybe sort of some of the benefits of, you know, limited benefits of having cold therapy. So I drink half a litre of ice water in the morning and then I take my peppermint oil and then I go for a walk, right? No carbohydrates, um, straight out there. Sometimes I'll have black coffee. Sometimes I'll use caffeine and other caffeinated products as well too. But I like the idea of the the pureness of, of this, if this makes sense. Yeah. But what I found is that if I was taking the peppermint, yeah. it would stimulate the vagus nerve. Yeah. Then taking the half liter of ice cold water mm-hmm. was almost freaking unbearable. Like yeah. it was literally like this was like all being cryogenically frozen. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. it was like like intense. Yeah. And I, I said, Steve, I would like to know more about the vagus nerve yeah. and this what could be a hack yeah. to actually – Tell the body to potentially release growth hormone, to tell the body to, to have all the other systemic effects that mm. you mentioned as the cryotherapy yeah. by using peppermint yeah. and then by drinking ice cold water. Peppermint oil is highly beneficial to consume orally for reasons I can't. Can I say why they're good? Uh, we're going to talk about peppermint oil. 
Okay, yeah. Pepmanol. Okay, it, it's great. It increases grip strength and, and your, your physical ability to jump, which is great. So it does has some physiological effect. It also is great for treating gastrointestinal disorder. So it does stimulate the vagus nerve. Yeah. Pepmanol. Yeah. So that's a benefit thing. And guess what else stimulates the vagus nerve? Cold, Cold therapy. But what is the relationship between peppermint, the vagus nerve, and then ice cold water. Because, it's, okay, so, and, and people will know this. You go and have chewing gum, right? You go and have some peppermint chewing gum or you have a peppermint tea and you inhale and there's almost like a coolness. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like cool mint. You've, you've heard that, right? Yeah. So what is the relationship? And is there one in the brain? There's there's not one really when it comes to Western medicine. Eastern medicine explains it a lot better. Eastern is way, way, way smarter. Yeah. Well, it seems to be. It's it, there, there, there's There's different types of herbs in Eastern medicine. And right. I'm not an Eastern med- I did six months of this in the 90s. But there's... there's so you're an expert. I'm an absolute expert. So, yeah. So there's, an up-to-date expert. Yeah, absolutely. So quote me on that. And there's TCM practitioners out there just getting a migraine right about it. Uh, yeah. but, but there are herbs, and, and they, they used to separate these herbs into, I think they were called doshas and, and different sort of things depending on which Eastern medicine. And some of them were cooling and some of them were heating herbs. Yeah, yeah. Now, and this is um, Ayurvedic as well, too. Ayurvedic right? like, medicine. Yep, uh, how do you about. say it? I say it wrong. Uh, Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic. Yeah, that's I how I say Ayurvedic. It. It's, pr- it's, it's pronounced spell Ayurvedic, yeah. but how it's pronounced, I don't know. I mean, but pre- it's it's it's, it's Kappa and Pitta and, and, and it, Vata, yeah. Vata, you know, yeah. and you've got sort of like different organs and yep. different foods and stuff. I don't know anything about it. Very, oh, very I little. Know, very little. So, so like Vata is more like it comes from the elements wind. And is is very it's it's like people who are you know a fair amount about that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. As you get older with your mushy weird. peas, yeah. yeah. But anyway, the but pizza are the, are the hot ones. Yeah. So, so like chilies and yep, capsicum yep. and so, so, spices. But they need cooling herbs, right? So they need the peppermints and those right. sorts of things because yep. they're more pitta. And yep. you can be vata pitta, pitta vata, and then you got the kapha version. Are you talking about as a body? Yeah, so body therefore type. you should you should go towards certain types of foods Correct. to sort of complement or to to address issues. To address the issue, wow. Because because those those it, like, like, like pitta people of the red faces, they're hot mm-hmm. and angry. Sort yeah, of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. The vata are the dried sort of people and the like dry lips and that. Yeah, dry. Oh my everything. gosh, Tony and I were watching a YouTube channel. <laughs> this guy's built. He's awesome. Yeah. He's like, and he has these cracked lips, and and I'm looking at his t-shirt, and literally on his t-shirt, he's got like, I don't know what he had done, but he's got like hair on his t-shirt. He's got like smatterings of like, it looks like protein shake mm. or something, and he's like, so, uh, half a million views on this thing, right? And Tony's like, and I'm like, I can't watch it because of his t-shirt. And Tony's like, well, I can't watch it because of his cracked dry lips, yeah. and I'm like, so yeah. Anyway, but very very, very vata condition, but, that. but that's it, right? The dry lips, yeah. the dry skin, yep. so they they need more. Oily based, heavy. Oh, cuff. I, I know, I know. But th- this was five thousand years ago. You know, we, when when they developed, this is one of the earliest forms of medicine. Yeah. So so now we know, yeah, of course. But but you know, you got to remember that back then it was very difficult to to um, you know they they only used these doshas and these different things, and it seemed to work. Yeah. Now you and I know oils are good for dry skin. Sure. Back then. Five thousand years ago, they figured it out. Yeah, but they used different ways of figuring it out. They said, "Oh, you're you're a vata type. You need more kapha based foods, the heavy, stodgy foods, and with the oils in it, and those sort of foods." Yeah. That, but then the vata people need that or vata conditions because you can be a vata person and have a vata condition. Wow. And so it's really interesting. But a kapha condition. Um, now I've got a friend who's is is very kapha. He's he's very overweight, but he's also very slow and very sluggish. And everything is a is a slog for these people. They 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 tend to go at it slowly. They they do keep going, but they're just that kapha type that are you know monotonous almost and that sort of thing. And they need some spicing up with with spicy things and those sort of things. This is the the conditions. So it's really interesting form of medicine. It is. I I, I, love I really love the wisdom of the ancients. I yeah. think they worked a lot of things out without drug companies becoming involved and without a lot of money becoming involved. And so they genuinely were interested in what nature had to be able to use. Now, obviously, science and nature together, you've got the perfect combination because we can understand how these things work. But you're right. Some of the wisdom of the ancients is pretty damn cool. And they did work a lot of things out, right? So, And you know know what the pitta people need? Cryotherapy. Really? I'm I'm, I'm modernising the words. Sure. But the, the pizza people with their high inflammation, high redness, yeah, yeah. Work, it would needed those cooling herbs, yeah. which is like the, the peppermints, and cool therapy. What are some other cooling herbs, Steve? Oh, uh, any of the mints are okay. cooling. I love spearmint, actually. I'm a sucker yeah. for spearmint. Uh, they're the ones I remember clearly, but um, yeah. there are a lot of um, – like turmeric is a warming yeah, herb. Yeah, um, yeah. 
But that can I have, be a, I have a curry with turmeric in it yeah. from Pho that I get. I talk about it all the time, man. I freaking love it. It's got mm. it's got this orange with this red swirl that's yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm just every time I eat it, I'm just like, I am just getting so much goodness. So so if you've got cold hands and arthritis in it, yeah, the 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 I old... used to suffer from cold hands. Yeah. People used to go, cold hands, warm heart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but you yeah. know what I mean? Like, just, but but you know, I I did used to. I don't yeah. actually my my hands are not as cold as what they used to. It's same with my feet. Mind yeah. you, the you know I, I've got size fifteen feet, right? They're ridiculous. But but my what feet. About Clayton's, what's his? Sixteen. Oh shit. Yeah, but he's fourteen and he's got size yeah, sixteen yeah. shoes. Uh, Act your age, not your shoes. I was wrong. Yes, yes. But um, it, it, but massive feet, right? But uh, always cold, yeah. always, always. Not so much anymore. So yeah. um, obviously, I'm changed the way that I'm eating food now, and maybe that's helping well, with does, the well, the heating herbs. Like like what what what? Ate a lot of turmeric. Yeah, turmeric. Ginger and a lot of ginger. Well, every morning, yeah. Tony now makes me a turmeric ginger. She boils, she grates it and boils it, and I actually drink that every morning now. That's and great. I, it's brilliant. And also this time of year where it's coming into winter. That's right. And I think that's why the, she started This doing. is the way that, that Eastern medicine started off. Yeah. You know, started working. And it's like if I gave you, <laughs> I can actually hear all the feminists go, "What your wife has to make it for you?" Yeah, yeah, she does. Because I'd burn myself on the stove. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I pack the dishwasher though. Do you? Oh, good. Tony does not pack the dishwasher. Mind you, spatially, she's not particularly aware of how to pack the dishwasher. So, oh, don't say just, that. Yeah, no, no, she's no. no don't you cut oh, that? Don't, geez. don't you? you Jeez. No, no, it's not for my sake. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Hey, actually, Beck, Beck, I, I had to show how to. I, I packed the dishwasher. It's a different way of doing things too. It's, it's just. You showed her a better way. Yeah, there we go. Now, now, now I'm on the couch. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm right. I'm on the couch. Yeah, now. Um, well, you I, should I did be about you, a week ago. You, you bastard. Yeah, and we we put flat faces plates this way, and yeah, just they're smaller. They go behind the one with the we the uh, cutlery. Uh, I know uh, it just works. It's yes, I know. It's just, it's, that's too practical, Steve. Yeah, practical. It's yeah. different. It's, yes. diff- it's different. Should, it's not better. It's different. It's just different. It's different. Better. Leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, imagine the the old sort of ancients working out that ginger and turmeric was good for your cold arthritis in your hands. Yeah, yeah. It's like you and I go, yeah, great, inhibits cox two and all this crap. But back then they just went, these herbs work with this. Yeah. And they figured it out. Yeah. And that's via the doshas. It's mm. like you got cold hands, like the RA people with the the old ladies with the the, 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 the claw type hands. Do you know what I saw one time really weird? I was watching this old, old film. Yeah. And it was an Australian one. Mm. And and the, the the kid used to bring some bees in a, a <coughs> and she used to put it on her hands and let the bees sting her. Oh, wow. What's that? What's with that? I wonder. Maybe it brings trauma to the area. And, and this was thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I thought I was going to ask you. I was going to say maybe Steve would know. But why would they use a bee sting to treat arthritis? I, I bet you there's a reason that the sting has some therapeutic effect, blocking pain or anti-inflammatory. Maybe it was just the pain issue, right? Must Who knows? Be. Anyway, I remember there's a great herb called Ha Ha Pago Phyto Procum. It's called or Devil's Claw, and it looks like a in the doctrine of signatures, it looks like a devil's claw. But it's for treating people with the devil's claw, as they used to call it, which was people with hands like that rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. Great treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. I love Doctor and Signatures. I know you man. do. I That's love I like it. it. Every time I hear about something with Doctor and Signatures, I just go, "Nature knows best." And if, if you pick up a chili, it looks like a flame. It's true, and so it's a warming herb. Yeah, we Doctor had one person. We put up, you know, carrot looks like an eye. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Joint pain, there you go. Oh, okay. Bee venom contains natural substances that may help alleviate joint pain and inflammation associated with arthritis. Oh. Bee venom therapy involves extracting bee venom for therapeutic use, exposing a person bee stings um, from live bees, an ancient practice dating back thousands of years. I love so there that. you go. So this was a film I was watching yeah. from the 1950s. Yeah. And it's, yeah, and she put the bees on. I'm just going, what the crap is going on there? I, I love watching some of the old stuff, man. Yeah. It's hilarious. The old, the old medicine, because back then, you know, we, we in the 50s, we didn't have many of the anti arthritis drugs that we do nowadays. So yeah. that would have been fairly reasonable. There you go. I mean, if you're allergic to bees and die, that's a problem. Sure. But um, if you survived it, no. But also, <coughs> You know, people are going to say, "Oh, but they're killing bees." It's like, yeah, I know, but they're. Uh, it's just what, what, what do you need? We need to fix your hands. Oh, I don't care. I don't even get into that argument anymore. Yeah. It's like whatever. Yep. Oh, I mean, pretty crazy. But but cryotherapy. Um, the the only other great use for it is, of course, with injuries. 
Of course. Um, so any sort of injuries you've got. And, and what, what I loved about this is that um, we talked about, and, and this is what I, I think about this was, the first people to actually test this for injuries was back in 1964. Um, you know, uh, and so, but, but, but it goes on to say cryotherapy, the reduction of tissue temperature by the withdrawal of heat from the body has been utilised for the treatment of injury for centuries. You know, don't you love these papers when they come out and it's like you talk about the history of, of, of you know, medicine, natural medicine. It's incredible how it's evolved, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. So, uh, and, but, so, <coughs> so just coming back one step, yeah. this cold compress that you yeah. put, that, does that have any systemic effects, Steve? Yeah, it, it does mild systemic effects. So you get a you, mild increase in growth hormone, a mild increase, yeah, do we know? it wasn't measured in this study, but, oh. but you, you, as you reduce the temperature, you reduce the inflammation of the as body. As you reduce your body temperature. Yeah. yeah. So so it does help with recovery. I mean, you're much better to jump in an ice bath or go into sure. these negative 100 degree. But drinking ice cold water, Again, some benefit. Some benefit, absolutely. But do we know and is there any information about Peppermint, ice cold water. Having- that, that's one I couldn't find. I don't know. Peppermint, ice cold I don't water. know. But but it's a cooling herb, so I can't see how that would be a a, a bad thing. I mean, it's quite incredible, isn't it? Mm. There's cooling herbs and like, like a salad is a cooling um, uh, food. Nice to eat people. during summer, right? Yeah. Um, but 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 look into Eastern medicine. As I said, I, I know enough to be dangerous. You know what I mean? I can still order Ayurvedic herbs. I found out the other day, which is like, mm, okay, I probably shouldn't be allowed to do that. But, you know, I can still order homeopathics and everything that I haven't done for years because I'm still licensed for that, which yep. is, again, it's mildly concerning. But but still, I mean, still you're not. I wouldn't use those medicines like the TCM people do, but, no. but I, I know enough to, to, to respect the medicine. Yep. And I remember during my master's, I did a, a, a they had to, you had to do a literature review on something that had nothing to do with your course. And I went, okay, I'm going to do acupuncture. It fascinates me. Yeah, it does. And I thought, I wonder if there's any evidence for this. Yeah. Lo and behold, there's so many studies. It's amazing, And I picked osteoarthritis. It? Yeah. It really helps it. And you, you think of osteoarthritis, you think it. it's a, a wear and tear disease, so therefore nothing will help it. And, and what they say is that the dry needling and, and acupuncture are the same. They're not. They're actually very different. So, yeah, I, th- I think in terms of um, – um, acupuncture and dry needling. There's a big difference Very between different. the two. Yeah. Not that dry needling doesn't work because I will get it. Uh, I think it's more trigger point. But yeah, um, I get it in my shoulder from my chiropractor. Chiro, yeah, yeah. My me. MST does it for me as well oh, too. God, but yeah, a true acupuncturist, I think, is looking at the meridian lines, Meridians, which yeah. Western medicine goes. What is a meridian line, right? So well, it works because the the, the trials are pretty clear. And even when they do, because it's very difficult to have placebo acupuncture. Sure. But the way they did it was they move it a centimetre either way. Okay. It didn't work. Wow. I love that. So it's not just like, oh, you get an adrenaline release because you're getting stabbed with something. It's not. It actually, they have done placebo trials. Yeah. And it showed the placebo was not effective. I'm a huge fan of it. I think what a lot of people like in my community as well too get worried about praying over needles and the and the mysticism that comes right. with it. And look, there is some intertwining of those two things as well too. But if you have a practitioner who learns the actual, uh, how would you say, the non-spiritual aspect of acupuncture, because yeah. most of us in the West, you know, don't, believe in that or what have you but but there there is just a biomechanical um wisdom and intelligence that they have learnt, yeah. you know where they're putting it in a certain point in the body yeah. which is having a, a an effect absolutely um anyway steve what else on cryo or are we just about done well that's pretty much it for cryo uh, it, the studies on it are quite clear and so and it, it sounds like yeah we'll summarize it yeah if you can summarize it steve because right. to me from the outside Sounds pretty good. Yep. Even moderate exposure through a cold shower for 30 yep. seconds is going to have it's some have benefit some yeah. for anyone who's a high-level athlete, yep. you know, growth hormone, mm. uh, follicle-stimulating hormone, reduction in C-reactive proteins, yep. um, you know, reduction in inflammation, you know, unbelievable. Absolutely. And you should be doing it. If you're a high-level athlete, yeah. whether a bodybuilder or, or a sports person, um, yeah, you 100% should be doing it. Do this. our listeners know Seabum, that the bodybuilder? Um, I'd say a lot of them would, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's a very successful um, 
bodybuilder. Physique is he? Is I'm not sure. Yeah. I, um, I, I think I think he might be. But there was a video on in the gym about him, and he does cryotherapy. Does he? He sits in ice bath. I was sitting there looking at him, going, "Oh God, you're a crazy person." But you know, but but of course he would do it. Of course he would. I this, the is, this is living, right? He so. smashes a leg day at the gym for two and a half hours, whatever he does. He's going to be. That's too long. Yeah, I know. Whatever he does in the gym, it's a hell of a lot of stuff. And he and I'll, I would go in an ice bath after that if I was him. Yeah, just for a few minutes, you know, get just get the, you know, the the Seven Eleven bag of ice and put it in a cold. Uh, that, that's enough. Yeah, that's that's what he was doing. Yeah, it looked like it anyway. Well, nice one, Steve. Yep. So we've got um, some more podcasts coming up around food yes. nutrition. Yes. Um, so there should be a lot of fun. It will be. I mean, this um, was a lot of fun. This well, this, was this was good. I think this is good. So overall, yes, net, net, net benefit. If you can hack it, yep. do it. If you can't, drink a half liter of cold water twice a day. Yeah. And, well, um, I'm still fascinated, Steve. I, I, I actually want to look more into this whole, you know, interaction between the vagus nerve and, and yeah. cooling the body. And, and I, want to, I, I, I want to find the the easy way to hack it so that yeah. I don't have to get in the cold bath oh, of water. No, anything so, uh, but you know, having said that, again, don't be a wuss if, if you need to and, and, and that's the sort of thing that you need to do. I'm going to start having cold showers again. To boost so, the immune system yep. and reduce the inflammation, cold showers, even at the end of your shower for one minute. Yep. Do it. Yep. Just suck it up. Yep. I'm going to do it. Good. After reading this, I am. Definitely. Yes, so am I. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, Steve. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Well, Steve-O. Yes. Aussie slang. Steve-O. I love the way you call me that. All right. So, mate, we've got a few here. And what's really funny, we're having a conversation. Yeah. Sorry, I've got my sunglasses (laughs) on. (laughs) Do you know why? Not because I'm trying to be cool. Yeah. But just simply because I actually... No. Oh, okay. No. Um, I actually left my glasses at home. And so these are prescriptions so I can read because without them I can't I can't bloody see anything. Do you remember so, that movie, um, that was it, Four Weddings? Oh, no, it wasn't that one where, where Hugh Grant had to wear his um, snorkel and goggles to the movie because he forgot he's or lost his glasses or something? Yeah, Notting Hill. Notting Hill, that was yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's right, because that, that, pres- that prescription. Yeah. Uh, which is funny because I think he gets around the rest of the um, rest of the time without any glasses on, but anyway, just saying. Um, the uh, and Spike, that's right, because he sat on his glasses and pulled them out. And oh, hey there! Yeah, it's a great film, actually. It is. Very it is good. quite funny. Four weddings and a funeral. Just FYI, was what they call a sleeper hit. It was a small, uh, um, independent film. Mm. They didn't expect it to really do much, and it just blew up. It yeah. became one of the most, I think, popular independent films at that time. Unlike the MCU and um, everything else that's going on with Disney and Star Wars at the oh. moment. I don't know if you've seen it, but they're all in the yeah. toilet. Yeah, Disney's. And that's the difference geez. when you've actually got stuff that's kind of fun and quirky yeah. without the message. Yes, the message. So get rid of the message. This is why I love. Um, uh, have you seen, obviously, Mario? Have you seen. I haven't seen it it's, yet. It's, 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 what is it called again, that, that Mario movie? Um, you know, what's Mario part of? Um, Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, the but what's the, what, what is it? Is it the Mario movie? What's the new movie that they bought out? Like it's done a billion dollars, yeah. right? Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, w- all the other films with a me- people are just sick and tired of having messages. S- yeah. You've got to su- political messages crammed down your throat. That's it. What is it? Mario how many Mario how records. It Look at that. Setting records. The other one. Okay. Another movie that didn't really have any agenda, but was just a bit of popcorn and a bit of fun without something being crammed down your throat. You say Maverick. Maverick. I love that movie. Killed it. And oh, it's still killing it. it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, it basically, um, Silvis, uh, what is it? No, not Sylvester Stallone. Tom um, Cruise. No, no, no. The, the really good, um, director. Uh, Spielberg oh, yeah. said to Tom Cruise, "You've saved Hollywood." Yes, like, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's funny. I, I, I just, it. I just love it. I love anyway, it, man. So what we're we doing? Where did we get onto that? So Australian sayings. Yes. So what I did just to be very trendy. Yeah. Uh, and consider this my snorkel <laughs> vision for those that are watching. Right? <laughs> it looks As I asked, I asked AI. Oh, okay, yeah. I've asked AI. What are the top no. ten, you know, Aussie slang, popular sayings of all time? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I agree with these, but anyway, we'll see. And I, then I also, what are the best new Aussie slangs, the things that are getting into our lexicon that we say? Do you want to hear them real quick? I'll yes. race through them. Because we were talking before that we, we, we're not sure what ground we've covered. I don't creep. A, we should probably create a list, Matt, of all the stuff that we've actually, you know, said before so that we can actually, okay, um, we, we don't overcome it. Okay. G'day. 
G'day. I think everybody yeah. has to understand. You go anywhere in the yep. States, anywhere, and, oh, I, you know, uh, uh, we just say, and you, I love the way that the Americans say g'day. Oh, yeah. G'day. Yeah. It's they, like, they, g'day. They, it's like, mate, you, no. You, g'day. You, you, yeah, you got to be worse than that. you got to go, g'day. G'day, mate. All right. It's quick. All right. It's not. It's, it's almost one syllable, isn't it? Yeah. And you, ha- and I love it because they say, and you have a g'day. Yeah, that's it's like, yeah. We don't say that, right? No, we, it, yeah, it's not it's just, actually good day. No. It's, it's like g'day. hi. It's like hi. Yeah. Okay, mate. Hi, right. hey, mate. Yeah, right. there you go. All right. So, um, no worries. <laughs> yeah. Which is, again, I, I think that's, a, that's you know, fair dinkum. Yep. I, that, of all time. Now, I yeah. have not heard hardly anybody say fair dinkum, I reckon, in the last 15, 20 years. Not in natural conversation. No. You say it in these podcasts maybe, but yep. you don't, you know, but you wouldn't say it in normal conversation. Now, the next one is similar to no worries. She'll be right. She'll be right. And yeah. look, Tony's dad says that all the time. Oh yeah. Oh, she'll be right. That's she'll kind be of right. that generation. It is, isn't it? it? Yeah, a bit yeah. older, but still, you, you still hear. Oh, she'll be yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arvo. Oh yeah. Always. Arvo. Yep. Bloke. Bloke. G'day. Oh, is that a good bloke? Thing? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What's this bloke doing? Yeah. How many times? Yeah. And that's one thing I love about mate, which they haven't even got on the list. Can't oh, believe really? that, right? Is that it, you, mate can mean your best friend yeah. or your worst enemy. Yep. Yeah. Mate. Or even somebody you don't know, old mate down the road, well, you know. You could imagine just having a, a conversation just with the word mate. Yeah. Mate. Mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's an exclamation. It's, it, it, it could be someone you don't even know. As I said, it could be like the old, you know, the old mate down the road, you know, that we'd never met him before, but they're your mate all of a sudden. Yep. That's, that's pretty much. Uh, Maccas. Maccas. Yeah, which is funny. A restaurant's got into there, so McDonald's restaurants, yeah. obviously. Chook. Chook, right? Yeah, yeah that's Mate, a sort get, of... Go down and get a hot chook. Hot chook, yeah. Hot chook and chips. Again, it's, see, see, I just see that as part of the English language, but it's probably not. No, English. it's not. It's definitely. Okay, no. there you go. Uh, Bogan. Bogan, that's an awesome... Redneck, <laughs> yeah. I think we've mentioned that before. And lastly, and again, yeah. this is similar to Fair Dinkum. You would have heard this 25, 30, 40 years ago, but not anymore. Can you guess which one it is, Steve? Oh, um, come on, think Sheila? Of, no, similar. Oh, in, in that sort of vein, that sort of era, that okay, sort of 1950s. Yeah. yeah. Bonza? Struth. Struth, yeah. So, yeah, this is it. All right, so do you want to hear the top 10 newest ones? Now, these are sort ah. of M- Melbourne centric, I think. Oh, I'm a Melbourneite. All I right. Was born in Melbourne. So, um, ISO. ISO? Short for isolation, the term becoming popular oh. during the pandemic to refer to quarantine and lockdown. See, now, I'm Melbourne being one of the most lockdown countries in the in the oh, world. Yeah. Lock me down. Yeah, I think harder, it is the daddy. most long. Yeah. Um, ScoMo. ScoMo might be moving to England and getting another job. Yeah, well, isn't that nice? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, v- vax. Vax, yeah, we know what that is. Snap lockdown. Well, I've oh. never heard of that, but my, I think this is pe- talking to the people in Melbourne. Um, tradie? Tradie, yeah. Frio Doctor. Oh, yeah, that's a, the wind that comes in every afternoon at, at, at Fremantle in that's Western right. Australia. Yep. I first learned about that when I was watching the, the cricket. cricket. Yes. That's exactly right. And the here comes the Fremantle doctors in. It's like, uh, oh, good. You know, uh, we can see Terry Alderman's changed in there yeah, because yeah. the Fremantle doctor's here. <laughs> that's like, who's the frick? I'm oh, from New Zealand. <laughs> who is the Fremantle doctor? And what <laughs> has he got to do with, <laughs> with Terry Alderman bowling? Uh, anyway. Um, oh, and here's one that reminds me of another um, Prime Minister, Snag. Snag. Now, it could stand for sausage. Now, it also used to mean sensitive new age guy. Yeah. Which is a simp, a simp now, I think. Is that right? I don't know. Yep. Um, and the last one is Sunnies. Sunnies. Oh, you You're wearing but, them out. But Snag, what's the other thing? And this is one that we're talking about before. Do you remember Fair Suck? Do you oh, remember yeah. when he said, fair you know, the- everyone's got to have a fair suck of the sauce bottle? Yeah. I think the original one was. Rudd. Yeah, yeah. But but I don't know where, that, where it came from yeah. before that, but. You know what? I honestly thought, and this might be bleeped out, but I honestly thought it was fair suck of the sausage. I honestly, I, is that right? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, where, I'm not, I don't not, know where non, you visit non, on the weekend. I, I mean, know. like, you know, down the valley or what uh, have you, Steve. I, I, I don't know why I'm thinking that. Yes. But it's funny you mentioned prime ministers because if, if you do the Harold Holt. <laughs> oh, yeah. You disappeared. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to do the Harold Holt. Yeah. He's out of there. So Harold Holt was our prime minister who went 19, for a swim in the 1960s. Yeah. I think. Yeah. He went, he went for, went for a, swim. a swim and never came back. Never came back. Anyway, yeah. Steve, we've got so far out of out of our bounds. I know. Here. I know. Um, it's always got, good to have a chat. Oh, it's good. 